So hello together. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar about IT documentation with uh, Blue Spice Media Wiki. My name is uh, Richard Heigl. I'm one of the founders of this company. And we are now in the market about 13 years uh, and we are building wikis for enterprises, for corporate users especially. And one of the most famous use case of, of course is that wikis can be used for any sort of software documentation so that you can learn how you use a certain feature or how you can configure your system or how you can install it and uh, things like that. But um, there is much more. Uh, you can have much more, can use it for much more, uh, more use cases. And I just want to give you an impression uh, how useful this tool is for you. Mm. If you have a look at this now, um, this is a page in a public demo system. You can visit it here um, every day um, on end.demo.bluespice.com and um, can reproduce what I'm talking about you, to, to you now in within the next 30 minutes. Okay, uh, I said Wikis are very helpful for software documentation. So that is very well known. And also very well known is, is it that you can use it for online help, for FAQs and how-tos. So if you think on huge open source projects like the Linux, Linux um, operating systems, they all have a wiki where you can find information how you can use the software or the, the <laughs> or would first say you would say billions of of features extensions and packages which are available and um, yeah this is a certain uh, it's a central place where you can bring all this uh, information together and where people can add recent changes and can be involved in in the documentation so that is it's not only a process from uh, by a few employees and their yeah, document team, but you can ask people, users to help to improve your uh, your system, your documentation system. But there are other use cases. For instance, um, IT process management. This is very interesting. Then, if you want to know how do we set up a system, what will happen if there is an emergency, how do we handle suppliers, uh, and furthermore, there are processes which Im improves your quality, which makes things easier and faster for your employees. And a wiki is a very good place to describe all your processes, to describe the responsibilities within your company. And what do you do if there is some, uh, an unknown situation? Or what can you do if your colleague is on holidays or uh, yeah, not in the office? Maybe I can show you one or two uh, examples for that. Then another interesting use case is customer and installation documentation. I can show you one or two pages from our internal system. Um, if you have customers, what is what have we installed? Who is responsible? And how, how can we provide a documentation for them for new developments, for instance, or for a certain architecture um, of the system? For me, a very new field is using a wiki for IT project documentation. Uh, we have one example here, I can show you that, but if you, for instance, roll out a, a system, a new a software in your company on many places, maybe you have to organize how are we doing this, and this documentation is in the same it's, it's the same thing, it's, it's also uh, makes it transparent for your users. What is going on? What do we have to expect? Uh, what is the status of the project? And that is quite interesting. It's a quite interesting thing. 
We have another use case for inventories. If you know to want to know how many hubs do we have, how how uh, what sort of um, what sort of printers do we have, and where do we have printers? But I'm. Um, to be honest, I think that this is not a very good use case for a wiki. You can do this if you use semantic, if you use metadata, and the Blue Spice Media Wiki supports you very well with, for, with metadata and working with metadata. But I think um, from a certain point of the development, maybe you would switch to a special software, but you can use it. Uh, in the first step, and I know that um, some say, okay, this is for us, it's sufficient. Uh, we, we, we use it so far and we don't want to spend many money in another tool. So and now you come, we come to the right um, column of this table. And I think this is also, it's also possible to use uh, a wiki for cable management, or IP address management, but I really don't would not recommend this for you because I think uh, it's, mm, yeah, I think there is special software which must better uh, adopted to those cases. But have, let's have a look what we can do and how you can use a wiki very, very well and which helps you to, to get your things done every day. So I told you about the, the IT process management. Just let's have a look at in our internal wiki. So this is not really secret, but it's so I can just show you one thing. Um, so wiki is a, a collection of pages and there is no structure in the pages. Normally you just have uh, links between the wiki pages. And, uh, but it's also possible, of course, to build an, a hierarchy in the wiki where you say okay this is a page this is a sub page or what we do for instance with blue spice is we offer you the possibility to create books where you have where you can really make a, a pdf exports or, or, or books or a hierarchical, hierarchical navigation um, where the people can browse through and see where they are and can learn about uh, a certain topic so this is, for, unfortunately, this is German. I don't have the really English um, um, example so far. Uh, I promise I will do this um, next year that you get an English example for that. But you can see uh, there is a book for information security management, which we are setting up at the moment. And this is Notfallhandbuch. Haha, <laughs> this is our emergency. It's our emergency manual. Uh, the image will give you an impression of what we are talking about. And yes, of course, we have, for instance, uh, defined how we are working with releases. Um, maybe just have a look at this. It's also German, sorry, but I can, uh, I can give you a translation. So this is the introduction of the release management, and then we have general regulations and we have process descriptions and we have checklists. Checklists are very important. That's, I'll show you one impressive one uh, during this webinar. And um, for instance, this is a build process where we define, okay, how do are we doing this build and how is the preparation? How will these packages will be brought together? Uh, how is the top all built and so on. And this is how the people go through that. And uh, we, we, yeah, we improve the description, um, I would say, during the process. And some, some, <laughs> some pages are always a bit outdated, but um, we go through the books. So every year, every two years, maybe if a new, um, employee uh, will come to a company, somebody is new in the company, then we rush through the books because this is uh, how they are introduced to the fields and how we are doing things. And I promise you that the next time we have to make this release management book uh, manual, um, 
has to be translated in English. Uh, but okay, you can, I think you can imagine what you're talking about. This is um, just a text, process description of text, and I think that's mostly sufficient. Um, you can use, put it in tables or so. This is, doesn't make any differences. Uh, you can also visualize this. Um, this is um, a flow, like a flow chart um, where you can have, okay, there's a, a process is starting, then something has to be done. There's a decision and you go to the left or to the right. And then, uh, yeah, that's how you can visualize this. Mm. That is very easy to be done. You can, for, for images, um, you can use uh, drag and drop or copy paste if you have an image something somewhere uh, a diagram a graph something uh, you just uh, put it there and uh, yeah you, you have images within a few seconds in your in your wiki screenshots as well but um, this is a bit special because this is made this flowchart is made with a tool, Draw IO. Maybe you know that um, it's available for many, many um, appliances, and um, you can have it here. So make this large. Look, this is great, and you can, yeah, now change this very easily and make descriptions um, within a few seconds. So that is an um, draw IO is uh, is a web service and you can you need an access to uh, to the internet and they have professional services as well but it's also possible to use draw IO in um, yeah as a as a as a local instance uh, so if you don't have access to the internet then Thrio is also available for this, but this is a third party thing and then we provide you with the integration. It's one example for integration, but this is very useful uh, if it comes to process management, not only processes in the IT department, but processes everywhere, like quality management or something like that. So now you have described all your processes. Yeah, you have made a release like we did yesterday. We have had a patch release and we have our processes and, and the people go through that. And in the end, you have to, you have the need to, uh, to control if everything has been done really. And what we do internally is we use the wiki for uh, checklist. This is a preview for a checklist tool we offer. I think in one of the next, um, one of the next releases, um, you see you have a progress bar, for instance. Uh, you have some tasks, subtasks, and uh, you see how far you are going. Um, you can make much more, much more simple checklists um, you just make a new page and uh, you you make there a, a table and what has been done from uh, who has to do it and what is the status is already sufficient for making a, a simple checklist but uh, as you see we are you can document your checklist um, in the wiki if you use for instance this sub page the sub page structure so we know what has been done what is was the status with 305 and 304 one four um for the different releases so we make for every for every release we make a new checklist and we can document what was the status um uh, on having done everything um in the end so checklists are very helpful um, and now we leave the use case process management on and control processes and go over go, go to another use case this is very well known this is a description of, uh, of a feature for instance a visual editor 
what is a visual editor? A visual editor is if you open that here and uh, now you can change things. I won't do this because this is, an, this is a life system, it's a productive system, this is our really our help desk. And this visual editor is very helpful for you because this is the uh, editor which comes with, uh, which is produced for the Wikipedia, so it's a very stable thing and uh, very well maintained, available in many, many, many languages. And uh, we have this, of course, as extension in, in Blue Spice. And yeah, now you have, if you want to have a look at this, there are simple descriptions. You need screenshots, for instance. And I told you before, to add some screenshots is very easy. You just use copy and paste and you tear uh, the, the screenshots to the place you want to have it and uh, give the screenshots some additional information like a good title, or a category, a short description, an alternative text, and then you're fine with that. Yeah. You can also create some, some templates like this here where you can hi um, make notes, things like that. Um, if you have one, ah, oh, I, I think I want, one thing I want to show you. You can organize all those things with categories, for instance. You can say, okay, this is about editing. And you can find all pages with editing topics uh, in a list. So categories will show you how you, where, where you can find uh, similar pages, similar topics. And um, the visual editor especially is a huge extension, a huge feature with many, many, many um, features so that your page maybe becomes too long to describe everything. You have to scroll down and down and down and down. It's very boring. And the, we, we, we split the content up, for instance, with sub pages. See, okay. there is a description of how you can work with files. And there is a sub page, how can I insert images, what I told you before. So um, this is a standard of, of, of the wiki that you have pages and sub pages and we support this with Blue Spice 3 now much better because you have now this way to, um, to organize content and structure content. This is one way. Um, another way is that you can collect it in books. We have seen that already uh, at the process management use case. So what we do is we collect all those descriptions and make books like a user manual, or you can have a look at other places, or an admin manual, a user manual for your different audiences. Uh, you get something like books or, or for, for, for manuals for your, to, to support your trainings, for instance. And that's how, how we do this. So uh, we put all those content in a special uh, namespace so that we bring all the pages together which are part of the user manual, for instance, and we gave them a structure, like here. So, how do can I start? How can I personalize? How can I work with pages? This is for users. And um, we can edit this book, out of all, administer this book very easily with an user interface, the graphical user interface, like you can add pages, for instance, uh, delete pages, rename pages, put pages via drag and drop in the right position. Now, if everything is fine, we can, of course, mark pages we want to export and export those content and manuals as PDF. You can also use it, uh, you can also export it with an um, docx file or an, um, an open document file. 
Uh, it's also possible. Yeah, and now you get your user manual in your corporate design. Ah, you can do this better, I know, but um, you see you have everything on board and links are working, something like that. This is very, very, very helpful. And normally you um, up the, the updates of those pages are mostly in this moment when somebody has to go to the customer and makes um, and, and has to to uh, an appointment and a training or a workshop and say, okay, I have to look at all the pages if there is still it's just the current information. This could become very complicated if you have different versions. Uh, uh, for instance, you have a software version two and a software version three and some different minor releases and your, your customers have also some old versions running for instance or a mixture of customer specific installations and others. So if, this, if you have those issues then we can help you with, uh, with that. Normally we try to, well, what I want to show you, it's basically it's easy to organize those things in books and uh, yeah, and if you have more troubles with different releases, with access rights, uh, with uh, let's say languages, then yeah, then you have us to help you with that. Um, but everybody, I recommend to everybody to start as easy as possible and uh, don't make it too complicated in the end because you have to manage everything and it takes so much time and the most important thing is that people get the information and can find the information and uh, sometimes you get lost in organizing all the things around it. And Wiki helps you to make it easier than maybe you know it from other tools. So we have seen a book, we have seen manuals. Now I come to another topic. Um, let's have a look at using metadata. This is a software catalog. Um, we as Hanovelt need a software catalog because we have uh, subscription contracts. You, the, the, the customers sign a, a, a subscription contract and they must not have to know what is included in my release. They must have exactly uh, the idea what... Uh, Hallowell is responsible for what? <laughs> what do I get and what does it mean? So we need use the wiki to document exactly this and uh, we make this very easy. So um, let's take an example. Any, I take, I try any, any extensions. Let's have a look. Maybe this is interesting. So yeah, okay. This is an extension we provide within our distribution. So. We set up the page. This is a page and there is a description. What is this extension doing? What are the features? How can you use it? Maybe can we configure it? And there is further information. There's an instruction. There's a page in the user manual. So. And there are some standardized additional information. What is the status? Is this a stable? Is this who is the developer? It is in included in which edition are the dependencies, is the license, is it activated, so things like that. So we put all those things together here and so that other people cannot change this because this is for us, it's relevant, but it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a legal thing, it's a legal question, this description. We put all those things in a, in a namespace called reference 
and we protected this place where we say, okay, reference can also can read by everybody, but only uh, a few people can edit the pages. It's people who are responsible within our company. But you can find it, of course, here. It's 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 public. It's uh, central. It's everything is there. And um, in the end, we need a list where we we want to know what is included at the moment in in this distribution. And uh, normally, if we have a release, a minor release, then we go all through the pages, have a look if the information is current and uh, yeah, if something has changed, for instance, maybe an extension is uh, deprecated and not part of the, uh, uh, the distribution anymore, or it a new extension or new features are now part of the distribution and we have to add this. But we want to have an automatically generated list of everything which we can export. That's exactly what we are doing. We have here the software catalog which lists everything what is included in BlueSpice 3 for instance or what is included in BlueSpice Pro. I think that should start here. Yeah. And this list is generated automatically. Uh, the extension name, description, the use case, the license activated and oh that are the Look, th this is the metadata we have seen here in the description, the reference page. This is exactly that. So what we have done is we make a list where we say, please give us all pages. Um, give us the status, give us the description, give us the license information and uh, the activation uh, information. And uh, yeah, that's it. And if you are through that, we go on the end, just on the right side, click on PDF export and we get a very nice software catalog with an extra cover, better design. Oh, I said something about better design, but um, <laughs> oh, there's something broken, sorry. Um, but you can imagine, yeah, okay, we, we export this here. Um, we'll have a look at this after the webinar. And then we just put that on the page, on the, on the website, and everybody can, has access to the status of the software just now. And that is this. Now you can imagine this can be used for many, many, many other things. And all you have to do is to learn how you can use these metadata. One thing is uh, that you organize everything or maintain the information with the help of forms where you have free fields, uh, free text fields, uh, radio buttons, uh, predefined uh, the, um, pillin pellets, um, drop-down fields, whatever you need. And, um, this is what is possible with BlueSpice, that you can have metadata and organize metadata on every page. And that makes this tool very, very, very interesting and very, very strong. Um, just imagine what you can do with this. Uh, I think you will you will get many many ideas and this is on board. You just have this that is all based on templates. If you if we show you how you can use those templates, you can help yourself easily to uh, you know not easily, but you can make your own forms and and your own organize your own metadata, whatever you want to to do with them. So this is about was about software documentation, and yeah, I, I think that's a, one of the most helpful things we have done. It took some time until we were ready to to bring all those things together, but um, not so much. And it's now we are so much faster in uh, in in organizing all the things we have had. 
horrible processes where the people from marketing, the developers and the product managers had three different lists and now we have one. <laughs> we have one and then the good process behind it and the thing is is uh, is finished for us. So Wiki was the <laughs> savior for us. Okay, um, let's go to another use case, which is interesting, I think. Uh, I told you, you can use the wiki for the documentation of your customers. If you are, have many projects, people are, have customer-specific extensions and instances, then you should have a documentation for that, at least internally, where you can have a, when we can have a look and see what is installed. Are there certain regulations? Who is the contact persons? Are there some contracts? Um, do we have some minutes, for instance? Yeah, we have to have a talks. What was what was agreed uh, in this uh, case? And that's exactly what we do here. Um, we have here, for instance, uh, we have we have made a page template so that the pages have always the same structure. That here on the on the top you can find. Uh, central information, where is the headquarters, since when do we have the customer, who are the contact persons, what is the status, and um, then some additional information, what was the initial situation, um, project history, uh, technical notes, um, and other stuff. And this is uh, how always you can you can change this, so you can adopt the content and the structure to your special company. And uh, let's just have a look at this um, quickly. Uh, what we do here, for instance, is that we have here, for instance, um, some additional information. You know this already from the software documentation. We can use subpages, but in this case, for deployment minutes, like yes, we have a development system running. Um, what was the first installation? When was it updated? Uh, yeah, or just some certain maintenance scripts, something like that. And we bring all those, and now if if the um, customer asks us for that. Um, we can bring this together in a documentation which we provide internally and we can send him that or her uh, when we collect the information from different places in the wiki and bring together in an always updated documentation tool documentation page this is a very long page you see this but maybe we can have a management summary we define okay there's a page break for instance and the server infrastructure, maybe we want to have a docker, uh, a, 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 a map of, um, of the different instances, which you want to change. Yeah? Look at this. It's again, it's, uh, it's, again, it's, it's draw IO. Oh, I have missed this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. And yes, we can use it for that. We can have a document you can see how things are organized in a graphical way and maybe we have some code like here look at this this is docker IP and if I want to edit this is <laughs> I get support from the visual editor because they support code information and makes it looking great and uh, you can f and, um, give it some structure. I just collect, uh, I just choose the, the, the language, PHP as well. Yeah. In this case it was bash. A bash. Yeah, and I can change, I can add some numbers, line numbers. So, that's fine. That makes it great to work with with the wiki and your document 
it's, it's quick, it's easy, and uh, yeah. Of course, if you don't want to use the visual editor, you can still have the wiki code uh, editor as well. So for the, the tech people, I can tell you, you don't lose anything. You can still get source code like that. So this is, I think that's a feature to have both use and possibilities to work with. Yeah, and if I, we have this, okay, we do the same as the last time. We just export that again for the customer and send them the documentation. So we have really to improve the design. <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> um, so, okay. <laughs> Uh, no, okay. Next, if you... <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Let's go to another case. I want to show you just two things. Mm, you have seen that we have here some sorts of minutes here. Uh, yeah, that's also very important. I think it's not only a case for IT issues for the whole companies you need minutes of course but the wiki helps you to do this and you don't have to send thousands of protocols and, and and mails to other people just make a new place for minutes and uh, maybe something like that a, a portal where you can set up quickly new minutes where you get already uh, a prefix um, or description you want to need, you need and then create new minutes with page templates. I told you already this is possible that you have already as pre-structured a, a template for the structure of the page. You just, um, just add the information and To be done until today yeah and you get your your minutes now um sorry these are simple templates which are very very helpful where is the portal here's the portal and yes you have a pre-structure already and you have a certain place for that and it's so easy, for instance, to make your weekly meeting mon Monday, for instance, and you prepare already the minutes for the next week. So you put already topics for the next week in the pro in the minutes. People see already what is at, what is uh, on the agenda, and you go through it. On the end of the week, you see what has been done. You can enrich uh, the pages with check boxes where you say, okay, this has been to be done, uh, is be done. And so um, you never will get a similar tool with Docs, uh, Google Docs or uh, Word, um, Word uh, Microsoft Word or something like that. Uh, this is much easier and much more configurable. And of course, you produce metadata if you want to, and you can make, again, lists and, uh, and then overviews um, for different places, like something like that. You can collect uh, protocols or minutes for several topics and uh, many other use, um, things more. So now I have to come to the end. Um, I promise not to talk more than half an hour. Let's have a look at this one here. I told you for me, um, it is quite new that you can use it, you can use a wiki for uh, IT project management. Because we have, I know there are customers outside who are doing that for a long time now, but uh, for us it's new, okay? We learn as well, <laughs> we learn together uh, with our customers. 
And for instance, we are setting up a new cloud infrastructure. This is a huge project with many people involved. And so what have we done? We have now set up several pages where we said, what is the business case? What, is, what are the requirements? It's a very important thing. Uh, what is was not included? Uh, what are milestones? What is the risk? Where are the focus? Um, do, we, do we have deliverables? How is can we debrief the project? But, uh, we have a place for the project briefing. We put this in our internal wiki, but it's also possible or thinkable that you say we need uh, this in a separate wiki, for instance. Uh, or we need this for specific uh, customers and only the customers and you have access to that. And um, then we have to talk about several wikis, project wikis, where the people can collect the knowledge and the information and the results of the project and get every yeah, document they need, planning document they need um, to work with. But this is something we have to talk about later. Um, I just wanted to show you this is also possible. And I think it's very, very useful um, because it's not only a documentation, it's a planning and documentation. Uh, the people see what is going on. They see the status and they can get, there is a transparent way of uh, organizing your, uh, your projects if you want to. And <clears throat> so people can have a look at this and see, okay, where are we? What is the plan? What is included? So maybe your sales people know already what is on the way. <laughs> Sometimes it's not a good idea because they sell it before you have it. But um, I think it makes it much easier in the company to work together, uh, especially work together if you're not sitting, you're not situated in the same office you know, maybe you have different places you have contracted outside or so um, the wiki helps you to bring all those people together and uh, avoid that they have to share uh, outdated word files and uh, and other stuff so i have to end now and i think i have to i hope i uh, gave you some ideas um, how you can use this. Please contact us if you want to know more, if you can, should have a look at your projects, about your requirements. And I think the wiki is a good way to, to deal with all those uh, requirements. We don't have had any, any, uh, any use case. We don't, yeah, it's coming back there are use cases who are from that uh, wikis are very good in, um, and others are not. And we are open and say, okay, we recommend to use it, or no, I don't think that's a good idea. So we are very open to discuss this with you, and we're looking forward uh, to hear from you. And uh, thank you very much for your time, and I hope. We see each other again in another webinar or in real life or wherever.